My name is Ken, and my, I am a Barnabas. But now, my homeland, Barnaba, has been scattered all over the Austin farmland and all over the world through a century of phosphate mining. In 1900, after phosphate was discovered on their homeland, the Barnabin people, who were naive and trusting, signed a contract they didn't understand. This contract allowed the British Phosphate Commission to mine the island for only £50 a year for 999 years. It soon became evident that the mining was destroying their island, but after years of conflict with the Commission, which by then included Australia and New Zealand, the Barnabans had no choice but to sign away more land. In 1942, during the war, the Japanese invaded Barnaba and sent the Barnabans to labour camps on other islands in the Pacific. After the war, instead of being allowed to return to their island, the Barnabans were transported to the Fijian island of Rambi, where most remain today. After years of fighting, including a court case against the British government, one thing still remains in the hearts of the Barnaban people, a desire to go home. Out of the 20 million tons, 13.5 million tons came to Australia. Australia bought that 13.5 million tons of phosphate on half the world price in market in regard to phosphate. Yeah. Anyway, our people so, have been helping the Australian government, Australian people as a nation, in trying to bring to Australia what is Australia now as one of the richest, powerful and leading nation in the Pacific yeah. region. We believe, and I believe, that there's a link where the Australian people as a nation and the Barnabin people are linked together. First of all, I would like to say that uh, the $10 million award is not a breakthrough in our case. Let's not forget that we are two cases which were brought up to the British High Court at that time. One was for Barnabin independence, which, in, which we didn't get. And secondly was the compensation for the damage that had been done to our homeland. The award, the $10 million award, was given to the Barnabans also with strings attached. Two of them. One was that we can't get the money, the $10 million award, unless we sign up the agreement that we, we are not going to sign uh, sue the British government ever. And secondly, we cannot touch that money as a lump sum, but we'll have to leave off the interest alone. I don't think this test is done to our people at the moment. Because if you look at the Barnaban way of life now on Rambi in Fiji and on Barnaba or Ocean Island in Gilbas, people are living very, a very poor life. People are still living from hand to mouth. And I don't think the Barnaban people deserve that. So in saying that, I don't think there's any justice done to the Barnaban people. But now, uh, if you look back at Fiji and Rambi, we can see that it is a paradise home. But to the Barnabans, we still believe that Barnaba is our real homeland. On one very important point, that uh, Rambi Island is owned by the indigenous Fijian people. The question always comes to our mind that if the Fiji government or if the Fijian people would like to take their homeland back, which is Rambi, where do we go from land. here? As yeah. the saying goes, and it's our belief that we are the land itself and the land is us. And when one goes, the other dies. That is the reason why we'll have to keep fighting for human rights and justice that be done to the Barnabans. Even though we bought the land with our, our own phosphate money, which is 20,000 pounds, we are not traditionally land owners. So if you're going to establish our culture and our, our customs and everything and try to develop Randy as a homeland, we cannot do that. So if you look at our future situation, I think it is a pretty hard question and it's a pretty hard answer for our Barnabin to say, yes, we are secure, because I don't think we... The hope that we have in our hearts to return to Barnab is to re rehabilitate our homeland. We need that land to keep the Barnaban community together as a race. And if that can happen, the Barnaban people will have a home, will have a future. And I think that is a very uh, uh, sincere hope that our homeland can be rehabilitated again. Definitely, if there's hope, there's a future for everything. And uh, being a Barnaban, I'm very confident that with the help of other bigger governments, we can do it. At the moment, uh, we've been uh, seeking uh, non-governmental organizations. 
uh, people who have uh, technology or how to have uh, uh, if, uh, to help in establishing infrastructure, water system, and things like that. Those plans have given us hope that things will be brighter for the young Balaban generation. For me, as a Balaban, a man of culture, I can't claim Rambi as my homeland. For a very important point, <coughs> Rambi belongs to the Fijians, and the Fijians have got their culture, custom, and everything in it. So it is not right for me to bring my custom from a different island and establish, establish it on Fiji and say this is my homeland. And I think that is important that we go back to our homeland where our ancestors and our forefathers have established the land, buried and died there. And try to seek help where Australia now can do something for the Balban people so that the younger generation will have a brighter future. There are a couple of things that I would like to educate and uh, make the people of Australia aware of. Identity to be recognized as Barnabans. We are not Fijians living in Fiji, and we are not Gilbert's people living in the Gilbert Islands under the Gilbert Commons. We need, we need the assistance of the Australian people and the government to bring back our people to where, to, where, where they come from. We decided to form a new group, a new lobby group, uh, and we named it Abara Barnaba. Abara Barnaba translates into English, Barnaba, our homeland. And through Abara Barnaba, we're currently working on a project to rehabilitate Barnaba. And there's three phases um, to this project. Number one is to remove the junk that's been left there. Number two, is to rehabilitate the island and make it livable again so the Barnabans can return to their homeland. And number three is to train the Barnabans so that in the future they, they can live on Barnaba, they can be self-sustaining and have a great future. The Australians are willing to help us, we are willing to help ourselves too.